Before I could start today's story, I would like to extend my sympathies to all of the loved ones and colleagues or family members that perished in the awful catastrophe and accident of 9-11. My heart and prayers are with you, and I hope you accept all my prayers and condolences. May God continue to bless you all. The September 11 attacks, often known as 9-11 attacks, were a series of airline hijackings and suicide attacks carried out in 2001 against targets in the United States by 19 militants affiliated with the Islamic extremist organization Al-Qaeda and were the worst terrorist attacks on American territory in U.S. history. The attacks on New York and Washington, D.C. caused widespread death and destruction and sparked a massive counterterrorism operation in the United States. There were 2,700 fatalities in New York, 184 at the Pentagon, and 40 in Pennsylvania. All 19 terrorists were murdered. Now, after these attacks, Muslims, of course, continued to be the target of hate, bullying, and discrimination. And after 22 years of this attack, they still face the threat of targeted violence. At the very moment when this heinous act of terrorism took place, we cannot blame one. And by the way, discrimination and hatred and racism is actually like a widespread disease present in each and every country. And if someone agrees or disagrees, this is a fact. There are situations and reasons which happens or which causes this act to occur or this hatred to be built. Today's narrative is about an occurrence that took place on the September 11, 2001. A man here, he was from one of the Gulf countries and he was granted this opportunity by his government to go for further studies in America. He went somewhere near Washington and he actually started his studies and research in the 1998. So by now he had a friend and his friend was also a student. He was not only a student, I mean his friend was not only a student, uh, he also had a job in his country's embassy. So these two knew each other for two years. His friend here made a decision that he wanted to sell his car. So he asked Fahad if he was interested. The vehicle was a Ford. He claimed that he had finished his studies and he was wishing to return to his home country. And here, Fahad purchased the vehicle. In 2001, during the summer, Fahad decided to take a summer class. And he was there. He was present in America with his family members, his wife and his children. He went to the university where he was meant to take his classes. Then there they informed him that the classes would not be held there. The first class or the first lecture, which was related to politics, would be held in the Pentagon itself. And as a result, they said, uh, said him that you may enter, just show your university identification card, and they, will, they would immediately provide you with the transport and take you to your classes right away. Thinking that, uh, he went to the Pentagon and he was going towards the gate. Here, he noticed that the person literally gave him a salute and let him in. As a foreigner, I would say that would be strange. He was recognized as a unique individual for that time. He felt that way. He noticed that wherever he could go, he was granted uh, permission for entry without even anyone asking for anything else. Later, he noticed that he had, I would say, a symbol or a logo or a sticker on his car, which, which was, I would say, a distinct advantage for this individual. And that would be something related that he would be an officer from a government, a governmental section or something like that. After entering, he wanted to be done with the lecture, but he couldn't find the class. He then decided he was started going all the way around the Pentagon and decided to depart. After departing, his other classes were cancelled. And it was for this reason that he believed that he needed... Uh, he had no precise explanation at that time, so he decided to return to his country. Now, since he assumed that the reason was his grades, he reasoned that it would be wiser to return to his nation and find out why they were cancelled. During the course of studies, he had to leave. 
and he purchased his plane ticket. And again, for some strange reason, he booked his flight on the 11th of September. As he was departing for the airport, they were shocked to learn that there had been a massive attack. And he was almost there, but then again, the flights were cancelled. So here this man was, he was he had booked the flight on the same day and that was an incident occurred and it was another absurd coincidence. As a result, he quickly went to his country's consulate. He said them or inquired that he had to take drastic measures to get out of the situation. And they said, why are you so scared? Why are you so afraid? He said that I had been in uh, the Pentagon before days and now it's night I mean after this incident I don't think they will let me leave and for some odd reason when I bought this car it was actually previously maybe registered in one of the names of uh, one of the officers or something and when he arrived at the Pentagon he was puzzled because he was looking for his class will anyone after listening this grasp the situation we don't believe so there were strict allegations and charges on him. And at this point, it was a strict situation. The embassy advised him that he uh, should leave the nation as soon as possible. Because if he gets caught up with this mess and becomes one of the suspects in the capacity of a terrorist, it would be difficult or take years to get out of the situation. So he took his wife and children. He, he asked them to go to the airport before him and he would reach later. His wife and children were practically waiting for him at the airport. So he decided to take his friend, go with his friend. It, he was a Pax, His friend was a Pakistani gentleman. And he drove him to the airport. When they were about to reach the airport, they noticed that the roads were vacant. I mean, that was again strange, especially because the airport was supposed to be full, but it was not. And this was the other day, of course. He didn't reach the same day. He went and, of course, he inquired from his embassy and they asked him to leave. So he left as the, he got the closest ticket he could. He had the impression that someone was observing him and, in fact, keeping an eye on him, knowing that he can could be involved. He just could sense someone. He was not guilty, but he, he could feel it. He was being followed by special forces and police or whatever, even the press. He wasn't who he pretended to be or he, what they thought he would be. He was simply a regular guy and a student and a father who simply wanted to return to his nation. But once again, we must return to the circumstances of that time, especially uh, the police forces or investigators were tasked with determining who had done such a thing. But nothing, however, can compensate for the pain experienced by those who have lost their family members. On this particular day, the suspect, again, I said, he assumed that the roads were deserted. And he was in the car with his friend, and he was trying to get to the airport. Of course, he never imagined that this could happen to him in a million years, that... All of a sudden, when he reached the airport, he was surrounded by the special forces, taken out of this car, on the floor, cameras everywhere, and, uh, and his friend too, his uh, poor uh, Pakistani friend, was also on the ground, arrested by the police. They searched their belongings, and they discovered there was nothing. And again, they took him to his apartment, and they searched, and they found, again, they found nothing. But then here they inquired that, why do you have, I mean, so many bag? The baggage, it's like not for a single person, it's more than one. He said that his wife and his children were waiting for him at the airport. And they, here they tracked him back to the airport and they discovered that, of course, his children who were devastated and uh, his wife too. So they found out or they assumed that the situation was not as bad as they imagined. But then again, they questioned him that why were you at the Pentagon and in a car that actually belonged to one of the officers? Maybe perhaps he was lying. So they reasoned or he, he said, he stated that he had purchased the car and had no idea that a specific uh, symbol would indicate that it was 
authorized to enter any governmental property or premises. They discovered that he was a student after further investigation. And he was there for a lecture which was held on the specific day and everything he said was true. So again, it was a simple misunderstanding. Nothing else. There was another situation he had to deal with. When he arrived at the airport, first of all, I would say they were kind enough to leave him or let him go. But when he reached the airport and people started staring at him and they were supposed to be with him on the plane, but they rejected his presence and claimed that there was no way on earth they're going to get on the same plane this man is, particularly when he was a suspect in a terrorist attack. But, however, the passengers again were terrified to board the jet. So they asked that, so they asked him and he also rejected the fact that he has the right to board the flight with his family. But here they said that if you want to, you will be kept on a separate uh, seat from your family members. And even if you have to use the restroom, you have to take permission before leaving. And he agreed upon this as long as he could return to his homeland. And it did. And he reached there. He went back to his country. This man, too, had lived in fear. May God have pity on the souls that perished as a result of this heinous crime. And thank you for listening.